Hey guys, this is Matt Grizzly Outdoors. Uh, today I'm gonna show you a BK7 that I just got finished with. This is for a customer, uh, on his request I'm doing the video here. Uh, after this video I'll do a bunch of uh, pictures and short videos on uh, making it. So first off, we've got uh, the webbing. This is a uh, extended uh, belt loop for it. Drops it down farther. Uh, this is just a standard belt loop. Make sure it's all in frame. Uh, next up uh, is a sheath. I zoomed in too much there. This is the BK-14 on top with the BK-7 inside. So you know hardly any blade rub going in. Nice and smooth and nice retention. And again, it's not falling out. It says a leg strap. The leg strap is not finished yet. I still have to put a buckle on it. Um, so that's in essence how it'll fit. Uh, there is room to go straight through or you can loop it another way. Uh, this one is set up to run a pouch on top of it. Uh, and then also with this, he wanted a, an additional uh, leg strap that uh, that would be removable in case he didn't want the swivel. So this has the D-ring swivel on it. I really like these, uh, these swivels. Uh, when you have it on your leg, it just allows, allows it to move freely, especially if it's strapped to your leg when you bend over, sit down and stuff like that. It really adds some movement. And you can see how nice it hangs. Not like the BK2 where it'll flop all the way over on some of the factory sheaths. But uh, this is actually gonna drop five, I believe it's five and a half inches from the top here to the top of the belt. This is two inch coyote brown uh, webbing. The BK-14 is uh, straight up and down, just because he wants again to mount a pouch. Uh, if you guys want that on your sheath, uh, standard right now, I have it offset at an angle, as you can see some of my pictures. But uh, if you want it straight up and down, we can do that. Uh, it removes real easy. I kept it as close as possible, because of the pouch I didn't want to get too, too tall with being stacked. So you just take it, and it pops right out. I did wrap this one with... Uh, paracord just to make sure I had enough clearance because sometimes when you put something under there it messes with your uh, retention but this didn't. Get the webbing in here. All in all turned out really nice. You got the uh, milled milled holes and all lined up with the back because the back is all milled and I just wrapped it with paracord just for testing purposes. I'll just probably just leave it on there when I ship it to them. And then this uh, again this D-ring is removable. And then the other strap would uh, Chicago screw right on so decent package nice setup again like I said I'll show uh, as I made this I took little video clips here and there so I'll go through and show that so feel free to watch that and guys if there's anything uh, you're interested in uh, go to Grizzly Outdoors uh, grizzly-outdoors.com <clears throat> and we can yeah all sorts of stuff on the website uh, along with that if there's anything custom you want we can always accommodate that so this is one of them I probably won't be offering uh, this style, this webbing anyway, for uh, the standard feature. It'd be more of a custom. Uh, there's a lot of extra sewing involved and stuff that we're not really set up to do without taking a lot of extra time. I do like the scuba webbing um, belt loops I've been doing that will be on the website the next month or so as a standard option along with uh, tech locks and molly locks. We can do all that stuff too. I actually have a whole stock of the molly locks and tech locks on hand. so. I just, they're just not on the website yet. And there's a lot of stuff like that. But I'll give you a close look at this guy. Again, the videos for the uh, how it was made. I took kind of highlights again. That'll be on there. So feel free to watch that. Have a good afternoon, guys.
All right guys, here we got it sanded. This is gonna be the finished edge. I typically try to do this before I rivet everything together. It just saves me having to come back in here and uh, buff it out. Just deburring all the plastic off of it. And I'll touch it up with the roto zip and then go to the big buffer. See if we can do this on camera. The little buffer just allows me to get into the dips and stuff. Uh, got it dipped here because when I uh, heat it later, this will be bent out, and the thumb brake will be bent down. It gives you a little more material, and that kind of makes it look a little evener once you go. So go to the big buffer now. And we'll go through that. Typically, once I've hit it with the roto zip, I'll just go right to the finish, finish wheel here. There you got the perfect nice gloss to it. Uh, once we bend mold this out, we'll be able to touch it up a little more and then the edges once we get there, but time to rivet it. Yeah, there's one thing you want to make sure you do before you ever rivet it, is make sure this backside is all clean, no burrs or anything that'll affect your edge. It'll make them stick out. Make sure that's all good. Wipe it down really good. Stick all your rivets. Another thing you want to make sure you do is all the any pencil marks from laying out your holes. Make sure those are all erased first. Otherwise, you'll be trying to get the eraser up against the uh, rivets, and it won't it won't look right. Uh, with certain drill bits, you do have to uh, kind of ream out the center of these holes. Some I've found a new drill bit that I don't have to. I haven't had to use the uh, the counter sink. Let me show you what I'm talking about here whatever it's called, uh, one of these things. Just put it in the hole, typically spin it, if there's a little burr, it gets rid of it. Uh, the drill bit I've been using lately doesn't have that problem, so it saved me one extra step. They're expensive, but it works pretty good. It's kind of a double step bit. So we get all our rivets in. I'm going rivet press here. Make sure everything's lined up so you don't scratch or scuff the rivets. Uh, on this one, this is a BK7 sheet that I did uh, the holes for the SE pouch are two and a quarter by three inch, and that is exactly what these are right now. It worked out perfect for my spacing. So I'm gonna keep that on hand and probably try to get some pouches that'll match these. But we'll go ahead and cut this to size now, and then we'll get it rough sanded, and then we'll uh, router in our, our slots on this one. But uh, so anybody looking to add an SE pouch to these uh, like I said, this one, this specific sheath will work for that or anything else you want to mount to it, so moving on here.
sanded edges. I'm going to flatten the belt loop part out uh, with the heat gun. <clears throat> now we'll finish touching it up. Camera all dusty here. See how thick that is from today so far? Adds up quick. Alright guys, here I'm working on a BK7 with the BK14 piggyback. This piggyback is going to be straight up and down to accommodate a, a pouch on the top. Uh, one thing I just want to cover quick as I'm going through here is knife prep. Uh, one thing that really makes the breaks a sheath in my opinion is how, how you tape the knife. Uh, this is extra up here but this gap where this uh, allows will allow me the proper tension. It's kind of tapered into there. So it saves me having to reheat and losing a proper mold. You know if I reheat the the sheath and all I lose all this nice uh, definition here it, it'll make for a looser fit. So I like to prep it ahead of time so it'll it's already putting in that, uh, that gap for me so the knife goes in and out of the sheath easy. Also on the blade this is uh, four layers, the blue tape is four layers of um, tape along the blade and it sticks down a little bit from where the actual blade is. And there's also two layers of uh, the green tape on each side so in essence there's four, five, six, seven, eight, eight to nine layers of tape uh, depending how I tape it and similar on the back of the spine of the knife so you get less uh, rub going in. Uh, that really comes in handy when you're using your knife, you can sap on it or something or if it gets wet it won't freeze into the sheath or stick. All your retention should be on this first knuckle. Uh, possibly a little bit in this area of the blade, depending on the blade, sometimes I gotta put a little pressure here. To keep it from wiggling, depends on the knife design. But for the most part, all your retention should be up in this area. On this sheath, it'll come up and just nick uh, the top of this hollow part. That'll help with retention too. And then I can uh, mold it out a little bit from there. But that's pretty much, this knife once it's uh, done will pop in and out of the sheath without a problem, without having to do major major work to it. So that's kind of what you're looking for when you're taping a knife. You want to make sure it's taped good. Um, heavier is always better. Uh, you can always tighten it up a little bit if you have to, but uh, that way it keeps the blade from rubbing. And then all, think of any prep work that you'd have to do. Like if you have a knife with a bunch of curves in it, you know, make sure that it uh, it's filled in and stuff so you're not having to pull it out of the sheath goofy. I had one in here last week that had the blade had a big swoop in, or big belly in it and I just took a piece of kydex and filled it in you know it was basically molded to fit this isn't it but and then sand it so it fits nice and then you get a, end up with a mold that's flat across but the knife inside is curved so it still comes straight out so stuff like that you want to be watching for on the BK7 up here it's laying around here somewhere this thing here I've got a little kydex piece pre-made that uh, help so this doesn't catch on kydex and then I don't have to remold it. It all looks professional and molds properly. So a few little tips for you as we go along. Um, we'll get this guy's sheath done and kind of take you through the steps. I'm going to go through and probably take more pictures and stuff like that as we go. I won't video the whole process but we'll kind of video some as we go here. So keep you updated.
gloves there. Do some final touch-ups once we get it uh, lined up with the piggyback sheet. And I just heard the buzzer ring for that, so that should be done in the press. All right, let's see how this guy turned out. BK-14. This is going to be the piggyback. This is a straight up and down. Did one, one full piece of kydex there. Nice, nice definition in the mold. Again, we'll cut it off somewhere in here and fit. I'm going to match the holes up identical to the uh, sheath along with the uh, milled out grooves so it all looks nice and uniform. We'll just have a space on it. You actually see the extra tape line right in the blade. Guys, this is a thicker kydex, so there's ways you can, uh, can mold that stuff so it works. You don't need to use a thin crap, the 60,000. So I hate when I don't know, I just hate sheet holsters and stuff with that. I like to use at minimum 80,000. So most of the camo stuff comes in 80,000. So that's typically what you have to use. But you can get good definition with 93,000 type kydex or 83,000. So you just got to heat it just right and put a lot of pressure on it. Hence the uh, 12 ton hydraulic jack. A nice even pressure too. We'll get that measured out and fit to the sheath.